Welcome back to Global Challenges. Nigeria exports energy to the world, it's oil. But for millions of poor Nigerians, that oil is essentially out of reach, and fuel of any kind is a precious commodity. Part of the answer may lie in a resource that everyone, everywhere, shares. At first glance, this looks like a scene straight out of the Bible, a place that seems permanently stuck in a bygone era. A place where time seems to have stood still. But this is Africa, rural Nigeria to be exact. A land where people walk for miles on end just to fetch drinking water. A land where everything is done manually because that's the way it's been for centuries. When it comes to the concept of isolation, it doesn't get more remote than the village of Ahoto, deep in Nigeria's northern corridor, where for decades, even centuries, the people here lived a meager existence under mud and thatched roofed homes with no running water, no electricity. But thanks to the help of an American NGO and using one of the Earth's most powerful sources of energy, the villagers of Ahoto have taken a giant leap into the 21st century. The NGO is called the Solar Electric Light Fund, or SELF, and it's giving rural Nigerians something to smile about these days. Solar power. A country like Nigeria with 120 million people, 80% of which have no electricity, the vast majority of these uh, communities are not likely to be connected to the grid anytime in the foreseeable future. They don't need the grid here in Ahoto, SELF has strained locals to install the highly durable solar power units that are helping put previously unknown villages like this one squarely on the world map. This is where all the circuit breakers are as well as metering, lightning protection. So this is basically our mains power. You can plug anything into this side that you could plug into NEPA basically. NEPA is the Nigerian Electrical Power Authority. Locals here humorously dub it Never expect power always. A reference to the frequent power shortages plaguing most cities in Africa's most populous nation and making it unavailable in rural villages. But here in Nigeria's arid north, the power supply is dependable thanks to solar energy. This scene would have been inconceivable in the past. The commissioning ceremony for the solar project held at night for maximum effect. A tour of the village shows just what effect solar energy is having on the locals. This is a community recreation center, complete with television. And even a computer room, where just a year ago, people would be burning the midnight oil, literally reading and writing. It helped their life actually, and uh, economically, you cannot quantify it because it's like somebody living in 16th century taking to 23rd century. So. The, the gap in their life is huge. Well, maybe not the 23rd century, but close. The bottom line, according to experts, the advantages to using this alternative source of energy are immediately noticeable. <laughs> Lifestyle improvements for subsistence farmers like Abdu Abdullahi. He used to work the fields for most of his days and would supplement his income by cutting hair with a manual clipper before the sun went down. Nowadays, thanks to this project, he's making more money than he imagined. His electric clippers buzzing away late into the night. It's great, he says. Before electricity, the most I would cut is six or seven. But now I can cut three to four times that. And the same holds true for mother of five, Han Satu Ali. She used to spend most of her days fetching water miles away before coming home to do her chores. <laughs> But now the village well is just a few meters away and fresh drinking water is pumped to the surface with power generated by these solar panels. But critics worry the startup costs are high. Equipment to light up a village like Ahoto costs roughly 50,000 US dollars up front. And the monthly electric bill can vary anywhere from three to five US dollars. That's about what people here used to spend each month on kerosene, candles and batteries. Small change in most developed countries, but costly on a continent where 60% of the population live on less than a dollar a day. Yeah, okay. good. Yeah, good. It is working. It's working. 
In fact, less than half the people in this village of 5,000 can afford solar electricity. But the project initiator insists a fee is necessary. People don't value what's given away. That's been proven time and time again. But in our projects around the world, we, we've never wanted to give away these systems. Um, we just don't think that's sustainable. On the other hand, asking families to pay cash for a solar home system is prohibitively expensive. So we've used microcredit and other forms of innovative financing mechanisms which allow families to pay for these systems over time. And when it comes to bridging the digital divide, Freeling insists solar energy has a definite role to play in rural Nigeria and the world at large. From the dark ages to a lighted community, it seems these villagers' prayers have been answered and they've made the first bold steps towards rural electrification and much improved lifestyles. Jeff Koinange for Global Challenges, Jigawa State in Northern Nigeria. And that's all for this edition of Global Challenges. I'm Jonathan Mann. Thanks for joining us and we hope to see you next time.